You've all heard the term strong acid, and you may remember from general chemistry the definition that a strong acid dissociates completely when it's dissolved in water, and a weak acid does not. However, what do we mean quantitatively when we talk about a strong acid or a weak acid? That's the subject of this lesson where we discuss acid strength and specifically the definition of pKa and we will look at a pKa scale. Using a pKa table, which will be on the next slide, is one of the most important things that you have to be able to do in organic chemistry. So let's get down to business. We will be doing some simple calculations here, simple calculations, but these are completely different from those that you did in general chemistry. A typical acid-base problem in general chemistry was calculate the pH of a solution that's one molar in acetic acid, right? Or calculate the pH of a buffer solution or something like that. We don't care about pHs in this course. For the most part, pHs exist in aqueous solution, and as we've already discovered, organic chemistry doesn't usually happen in water. What we care about a lot, rather than pH, are pKa's. So let's review what is a pKa. Well, recall that ionization of an acid is an equilibrium process, right? If we have an acid HA and, you know, simplest case is to dissolve it in water, so HA reacting with H2O is in equilibrium with H3O plus and A minus. And the equilibrium constant for this reaction, remember when you're writing an equilibrium constant expression, you take concentration of products and put it over concentration of reactants. So it's concentration of H3O plus, concentration of A minus, over concentration of HA and concentration of H2O. However, the concentration of H2O is 55 molar. That's what it means to be water. And that is generally going to be much, much larger than the concentration of any acid. So pulling out the con we can pull, pull out the concentration of H2O and call it a constant. So then we can get a similar expression called the Ka expression, which simply has concentration of H plus, concentration of A minus, over the concentration of HA. Now, the magnitude of Ka ranges between 10 to the 12th on the high end and 10 to the negative 50th on the low end for compounds relevant to organic chemistry. This is just a huge range. So what we do is we define the pKa as negative log of the Ka. P is the chemist's abbreviation for negative log. And that way we have numbers that are more convenient, numbers between negative 12 and 50. So when we're referring to the pKa of something, we just say its pKa is 9, rather than its, its Ka is 10 to the negative 9. Okay, so let's look at an example of this. We'll use the important organic acid, acetic acid, CH3COOH. Remember, that's a carboxylic acid so we would expect it to have an acidic hydrogen. The relevant acid-base equilibrium would be that if you take acetic acid and put it into water, you generate some amount of H3O plus and some amount of CH3COO minus, the acetate anion or the conjugate base of acetic acid. Well, the Ka for this expression is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. Acetic acid is a weak acid. It does not want to undergo ionization completely. It only undergoes ionization to a small degree. Its pKa, if you take 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth, punch the log number on your calculator, and then take the negative sign of that, you get a pKa of 4.74. Okay, that's all well and good, but what, what does this mean? What does 4.74 mean, and where is it? in the grand scheme of pKa's. Well, depicted on this slide is a pKa table. This is table 3.1 in your textbook. And what this shows is the pKa of many common acids, as well as the structure of their conjugate base. So it starts with sulfuric acid. This, there are pKa tables that are longer than this, including the pKa table that you're going to have on your exam. But this one starts with sulfuric acid as being the strongest acid. Its conjugate base is the bisulfate anion, and it has a pKa of negative 9. 
What that means is if you take sulfuric acid and put it into water, its dissociation, the equilibrium constant for its dissociation is going to be 10 to the 9th. At the very bottom of this table are the weakest acids. We're going to count ethane as being the weakest acid, and it has a pKa of 50. That means its dissociation constant is 1 times 10 to the negative 50th, a really, really, really tiny number. Okay, so as you can see from looking at this table and the notation on it, the stronger the acid at the top of the table, the lower or more negative the pKa. pHs, in general chemistry, can only range from 0 to 14. A common mistake that students make is to think that pKa's can only range between 0 to 14. That's not true. pKa's can be higher than 14, and pKa's can also be negative. In fact, any strong acid from general chemistry, any acid that will dissociate completely, have an equilibrium constant greater than 1 for dissociation, by definition, is going to have a negative pKa. Okay, so those will include things like HCl and H3O+. So note that there are two acid-base equilibria involving water on this table. Water can be a weak acid. It has a pKa of 15.7, and that is a number I expect you to keep in your back pocket. That will come up again and again, both in this course and in other chemistry courses. Water is a weak acid, it's in equilibrium with OH-, minus, but water is also a weak base, in which case it's in equilibrium with H3O+, plus, and the pKa of H3O+, plus is negative 1.74. I point this out to you because a lot of students get confused as to which number they're supposed to use if water is in a problem. You have to identify, and we'll see in a future lesson exactly how we do this, whether water is acting as an acid or water is acting as a base in a problem. If water is acting as a base, you need to use the negative 1.74, and if water is acting as an acid, you have to use the 15.7. Alcohols, such as methanol, ethanol, propanol, butanol, etc., have the same acid-base equilibria. They're capable of losing the OH hydrogen, and those hydrogens are of similar acidity. Again, we will talk in a later lesson about the factors that are responsible for the acidity of certain hydrogens. So if they have the same acidity, they'll have about the same pKa. And you can see that ethanol on your pKa table has a pKa of 16. Is methanol on your pKa table? No. Not every compound that you will encounter is on your pKa table. But if water has a pKa of 16 and ethanol has P a pKa of 16, guess what methanol's pKa is going to be? 16 also. Okay? And then, again, you can have alcohol, such as methanol and ethanol, acting as bases, just like water can act as a base. And the pKa of protonated methanol or ethanol is completely analogous to that of H3O+, plus, and it's about negative 2. One more important equilibrium that's not on the table from the book is that of NH4+, plus, ammonium ion, being in equilibrium with H+, plus, plus NH3. And the pKa of this is 9.2. So ammonia and other amines also have two acid-base equilibria, just like water does. So they're either moderately strong bases, the pKa for NH4 plus is 9.2, or very weak acids. Look further down on that table. NH3 can act as an acid to lose a proton and give NH2 minus. That pKa is 38. The equilibrium constant is 10 to the negative 38. It really doesn't want to happen. NH2 minus is a very strong base. And also note on the table, the strongest acids are at the top, and the weakest conjugate bases are at the top. The weakest acids are at the bottom, and weak acids have strong conjugate bases. So NH2 being the conjugate base of a very weak acid is a very strong base. But 38 is still not 50. 
Ammonia is still 10 to the 12th times more acidic than ethane is. And that becomes important as we move forward in organic chemistry. So even though some of these pKa's are very high, meaning that the amount dissociated is very low, there are still differences between them and those differences are relevant to the way these molecules react. Finally, there are a number of weak acids, so things at the bottom half of this table, mostly where the acidic hydrogen is bound to carbon. Okay, we've got one in 9.0, the hydrogen on a carbon between two carbonyls. We've got another one at 19, the hydrogen on a carbon next to one carbonyl. At 25 is the hydrogen on an alkyne. At 44 is the hydrogen on an alkene. And at 50 is the hydrogen on an alkane. All of these are hydrogens bound to carbon, which means if that hydrogen is lost, what is left behind is a carbanion, some molecule with a negative charge on carbon. These are going to turn out to be important in organic chemistry, and we're going to come back and look at these more systematically in a later lesson also. But for now, become familiar with the pKa table. Know what is going on with where the strong acids are and where the strong bases are, and what the value of a pKa, what chemical meaning it conveys.